And this actually looks more like hand-built track using individual lay components being made to a high standard but actually you're able to buy these out of the box for around the same price as what you would buy any other point. A big hello to you. I hope I find you well. Welcome back to the channel. It's so great to see you. I'm Jennifer Coke, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today we're going to be reviewing a product that I've had a lot of requests for and thanks to the generosity of Pico who've sent one of their all new bullhead points through we're finally going to be able to take a good close look at this new product range that has been released by Pico in response to request by modelers to have a much more prototypically British 00 gauge track. And what I mean by this is that the sleeper spacing, particularly on the previous ranges, is quite close together. And if you've ever looked at UK track work, well, one of the features of it is that the sleepers aren't really anywhere near as close together as North American practices. And that's been a bugbear of a lot of modelers for quite some time. In fact, some have gone as far as to re-space the sleepers on their track. One of the other things that Pico have done with this range is they've introduced a bullhead rail profile. And this is a type of track that's actually really, really common across the UK. And certainly the further back you go, the more widespread it was. And you can still find an awful lot of this stuff on lightly used freight lines, sidings, loops in stations. So this is a product that is equally applicable to modern image modelers as well as those who model way, way back right to the pre-grouping period. The points come with quite a few different modifications. They're not quite as you might expect from the current ranges in Code 75 and Code 100. They've got some innovations that we first saw in the set track O gauge points, and that's the Unifrog. Now, what this is, is it's a complete replacement for Insul Frog and Electra Frog. Effectively, it does both in one. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how that works and how easy it makes fitting these points. They look great from every angle, but do they perform? Well, today I'm going to put them to the test. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and find the full range stock today at ukstockiststramfabrique.co.uk where you can purchase anything from the range. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections. No collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. But I'm really excited to take a good long look finally at this all new bullhead range that's coming through from Pico. I've had a lot of requests to review these, so it's with thanks to Pico that we're able to put one of these points through its paces and stress test it and see, does it live up to expectations? Come with me, let's find out. <laughs> Today I want to talk about track and you'll see on your screen the new Pico Streamline bullhead point in code 75 and I'm very grateful to Pico for sending over one of these allowing me to take a good close look at this all new track range which complements the 00 range which has been on the market for quite some time. 
it's been a vociferous complaint of modelers that if you're modeling UK outline, that the previous and still available range of Pico Streamline has far too close a spacing on the sleepers, which is much more akin to a North American practice where because of the different way that they lay their track and fasten it together, they make use of a greater number of ties or sleepers per yard length than we do over here in the UK. It's also the case that a lot of track in the UK, certainly prior to the introduction to continuous welded track, uh, was laid using bullhead, and this refers to the actual cross section of the rail itself. Now, more commonly, flat bottom rail is used, but way, way back in uh, the Big Four era and before, all track was jointed and uh, it had this bullhead profile. And that's pretty much what you would characteristically see as a UK track profile. Well, Pico are very good at listening to what modelers are asking for, and they've brought out the range of bullhead track and have been slowly expanding with a very comprehensive range of uh, points, but also uh, diamond crossings, and we've more recently had the double slips and the single slips introduced. This particular point they sent over a right hand point, and the other thing of great interest is that this is unifrog. Now I know that people are probably very very familiar with insulfrog and electrofrog but unifrog is a much more recent development from Pico and the idea behind this is that it allows a user to use a point with all the benefits of insulfrog and electrofrog in one unit and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this video. I'm going to take this out of the packaging first and uh, one of the things which you do get in here is you do get a very comprehensive set of instructions on the backing card and then you get the point itself and it's all contained within this plastic sleeve. But one criticism I would have of this is that uh, I really do think we should be moving away from this kind of plastic. Um, not actually that long ago Pico points came in a uh, blue and white cardboard box and for me the plastic sleeve does feel like a retrograde step. But I will point out that uh, Pico have started to produce the TT range with these fully recyclable uh, heavy card packaging and I think that this is the way to go and I would like to think that they will be introducing this type of packaging to the rest of their range sooner rather than later because this is a great step forward but we're not here to talk about the TT range in this video. The back of the card that comes in here gives us a little bit of information about the profile of the rail and you can see here very helpfully it shows the actual profile that we refer to as bullhead and you can see that the rail chairs are these characteristic ones with the lower inside uh, clamp and the uh, higher outside clamp and the rail kind of fits in between these and you quite often see them with a piece of hardwood being used as the wedge to stop them from being able to move about. Indeed, in my garden, I've got a number of these rail fixings and they give a really great insight into how the track is fixed. It also gives a load of information about, uh, in particular, the unifrog. And you can see that quite clearly on the point itself here. We've got the closure rails coming into the frog. And there is a small amount of insulation, which looks akin to what you would expect on an insole frog point. The actual V of the frog there, you can see, looks just like an electrofrog point, where we've got metal going all the way to the tip. There's no plastic insert like that you would find on an insole frog point. And then further back, just there, you can see the insulation gap, quite subtle and that is separating this uh, frog area from the rest of the rails in the point. Here on the underside, we can see quite clearly how this unifrog construction works. There's uh, some wires hidden inside the sleeper base 
that give a positive electrical continuity from these outer rails to uh, the inner ones just here and the uh, closure rails. But then also further along, we've got another set here and here, and they give us power again from the outer rails to power this end of the point so that these two rails are also live. And if you feed the power in from this end of the point or from this end of the point, just like in an insul frog point, all of these rails are live at the appropriate polarity at all times. The polarity doesn't change on this part of the frog. This little piece here is where the unifrog magic occurs and it's a completely separate piece but it's all metal and if you don't want to wire it in the point acts like a big insul frog point with just a slightly larger insulated piece here and it's small enough that the wheelbase of pretty much any locomotive will not really be affected by a dead spot in the track here. It also means that when you're running on DCC, the actual tread of the tyres of the wheels isn't going to bridge the two rails, which is something that could happen with some of the older insul frog points, giving you a momentary short. That does not happen. We've also got a much more durable end here because this is metal instead of plastic. And you can leave it like that if you want, uh, just completely insulated. If you want to wire this up in the same way that you would with a, an electrofrog point, we've got this wire just down on the base and it's tucked away in place there. And you can pull it out and that is connected to that unifrog part of the uh, frog. That means we can use this wire to wire back to a switch which is connected to the motion of the blades. And that way when the point is changed, it's also able to change the polarity of that smaller section of the frog. And that will give you exactly the same functionality as an electrofrog point with no risk of any shorting between any of these other areas of the point. And it really is a great design that uh, I think we first saw on the O-gauge set track points, and they really did make wiring a layout a lot easier. And it's great to see this start to make its way into new track products. And I dare say that as the tooling wears out on some of the rest of the track range, uh, when they do make new tools, they will take the opportunity to convert them over to this unifrog construction and thus do away with the need of having separate insul frog and electrofrog ranges. Setting this uh, point down on the mat here, I'm going to compare it with a regular, albeit code 100, electrofrog point. And this is a really great way of just showing how the sleeper spacing and indeed the thickness of the sleepers changes. So you can see these points are exactly the same geometry. So uh, they, we've got the same angle of uh, the point, the same full length of the point, and this track diverges by the same amount. So effectively, these are like for like on the geometry of your layout. What's interesting is this actually creates a little bit of an optical illusion. And you can see there that this looks to the naked eye like it's a wider gauge. But actually, I assure you, it is exactly the same. The wider sleeper spacings confer with how UK track works. And another area that I do really like here is you'll see that these wing rails on the bullhead track, these are metal, just like they would be on real track work. And uh, that is compared to the plastic wing rails that we're used to on the regular range of track. And the thing about the plastic ones is obviously they're a very different colour. They're also a little bit less durable, but it's not really a big, big deal. But the metal ones do look so much better. And this actually looks more like hand-built track using individual lay components being made to a high standard. But actually, you're able to buy these out of the box for around the same price as what you would buy any other point. The points also come 
sprung and you'll need this if you use solenoid point motors if you use slow acting like the cobalt range from DCC Concepts then you will need to remove that spring but as standard it's much easier for Pico to make them all with that spring and then you just take it out if you don't need it and that's exactly the same as this range of track. Another area that has changed is where the solenoid point motors would attach to the track and if I show you on this these feature just these little holes and these slightly wider larger sleepers and this is so that you can actually attach one of their PL10 type motors directly to the underside of the point uh, and then it would just act straight on the point held in position positively located but it does mean that you're stuck with these mounting points whether you use them or not and even if you trim them off you've still got these slightly wider sleepers that are left as a legacy of that the bullhead points interestingly enough don't have that at all there's no compromise in the sleepers either side of the tie bar we still have that hole in the center so you can still use the Pico PL10E type point motors but um, it is nice to see that the point above ground really does look perfect without any of that compromise to fit in that mechanism to mount a solenoid motor. We do still retain these holes at either end of the tie bar and these are perfect for going into either a point rodding system such as the ones that are sold online by DCC Concepts as a working model or from the ratio range as a static uh, visual only representation uh, or you could even use these with a wire and tube method to control the point uh, all of that is still there Looking to the track construction, we've also got this fabulous uh, rendition of the correct chairs. And these are correct for the different types of chairs that you would have on a point. And you can see there we've got the regular ones. Then we've got the double chairs, which are for check rails. And we've got the, uh, the ones that hold all of the frog assembly in regular ones back out here and they are correctly profiled so they have the lower side at the back where the wheel flange would go and the taller side there on the outside of the track further back we've got these chairs that you can see that the uh, closure rails can slide on just like real points and there's also no pivot point either so when these points change this rail actually flexes just like on the prototype again so you don't get that strange deformation of the uh, the actual blades as you can see here where they bend at this point and actually when you look down track that has been laid you get that strange kink just there which the bullhead point does not have you can see that the uh, closure rails there and the point blades actually bend and aesthetically that is much much nicer so that's the visual comparison out of the box how do these match up when we build them into a layout type environment and uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to wire this up as such that I can change the polarity on the frog and uh, I am going to use a solenoid point motor. I've got one here that I've pulled from a scrap box because it's got a PL13 uh, micro switch and this means that when the point changes that automatically will change the polarity once I wire this in that will allow me to uh, feed the correct polarity straight back to this small unifrog. I've put together the test rig now and uh, what we've got here is the point all uh, fastened in place, a bit of track work either side. This is all bullhead track so you can see that the point matches with the bullhead plane track 
really quite nicely. At the moment, I've got it wired to the rest of my layout. You can just see the two wires down there that's providing power to this unit. And the solenoid that's underneath here is a Pico PL10. And I've got that being powered by an accessory decoder specifically for solenoid point motors. As it stands, the point motor is not changing the polarity of the frog. It's currently wired up to be used as an insul frog using this unifrog here. So essentially, that uh, bit in the V is just completely dead. In order to demonstrate this, I've got this short wheelbase locomotive. I just put that in place and I'm going to bring that up on the controller. So I'm going to be running that at speed step 10. And that's quite a slow speed, so normally you'd be doing something like shunting. And this is where the biggest risk of the locomotive stalling is. And you can see there that it's got all the way over. There's not a hint of uh, any problems with the power going to the locomotive. One of the things that really helps with this is the fact that we don't have a big hole here and a rounded front to the V which the locomotive could kind of pivot into and cock a wheel in the air which is something that uh, can sometimes happen and really does plague short wheelbase locomotives. I'm going to select the accessory number that this is on and then I'm going to change the point and then I'm going to set it off again. You can see there, speed step 10. And now it's taking the diverging line. Again, the unifrog is set up to act like an insul frog point. And all of those wires that I showed you before underneath are ensuring that we've got a power supply to all the other parts of the point that need to get power without actually compromising the frog and the switch rails. With the test rig inverted, you can see that I've now soldered up the micro switch that is attached to the solenoid point motor. It was just simply a case of soldering together that wire that's coming out from the frog and this wire that goes into the PL13 micro switch. This switches when the solenoid switches. And that means that we get a good positive change on the frog polarity without needing to worry about any extra switches. It's entirely taken care of by the motion of the solenoid point motor. The accessory decoder is here and all that is doing is providing the power to the solenoid. What this now means is that we've got the equivalent of an electrofrog point. But unlike an electrofrog point, we don't have to worry about any potential shorting of the polarity if a locomotive passes through and the flanges just catch the switch rails, which unless you've carefully prepared them on a regular electrofrog point can become a source of momentary shorts. I'm going to bring in the locomotive again, place that on the track, and this time we've got an electrofrog point with that unifrog wired up so that the polarity changes when the point changes. And this means that there's now no gap whatsoever in the frog of the point. And if you've got a very, very small wheelbase, four wheel locomotive, or perhaps you've got locomotives that are very, very finicky, this just makes sure that you give them the best possible chance. Setting the locomotive going again at speed step 10. This time, I really don't expect any stutters whatsoever. And as you see, the locomotive makes it across with no dipping, no hesitation. Now bringing it back.
And I'm going to change the point again. Speed step 10. And you can see that the locomotive runs incredibly reliably at a crawl with nothing but a plain decoder in it. Again, it makes it across that frog with no issues whatsoever. And you can see that there's no dipping at all from the locomotive. When the wheels go across the frog, there's no point where they fall down into the frog and cause the locomotive to cock a wheel in the air. Looking down the length of the point, it is again very, very apparent that there's no kinks in those switch blades of the point. They look just like the prototype does. And when I switch the point, again, we get that prototypical bend that is just like the real thing. In conclusion, I really do like the Pico bullhead point work. It's got a much more prototypical sleeper spacing, and it really brings home compared with the regular point work that has been on the market for a long, long time, that this looks so much more like the prototype. It also comes with a number of other really great features, all of which I think are a huge improvement over what's been in the range before. The Unifrog is great. I've already used these on O-Gauge points and it's really great to see it make its way down to double O. It means that you can run these as Insul Frog or Electro Frog with great flexibility. And indeed, if you just poke that wire down through your baseboard, you can start out with it as an Insul Frog and only putting in the polarity changer if it turns out you really need it. And that is great flexibility. You don't have to modify these points to work flawlessly on DCC, and they are equally at home on DC. These metal check rails as well are a massive improvement over what we've had before. I really do like them. It gives it a look of quality, hand-built, professionally made point work. But this is out of the box, minimum effort, maximum effect. Another area that really is a quantum leap are these switch blades. They're all one piece and they bend as the point changes. And that means we don't get any weird kinks. And that aesthetically really does look good. We've also lost that mounting point for the PL10. Now there are modelers that might lament that, but actually the look of the sleeper base is much improved for this. And it doesn't stop you from mounting the solenoid point motors underneath the baseboard, just like I've done here. Overall, the improvement in the aesthetics is well worth it. The whole range of the Pico Bullhead is slowly expanding and most recently the single and double slips have made their way into the range. They're not that expensive compared to the regular Code 100 and Code 75 points that were already in the range and if you are building a layout from scratch these are definitely the point work to go for. The look of these is so much better for a UK based layout. It doesn't preclude you from making use of your existing Code 100 and Code 75 track. If you want to use them, say for example in tunnels or in hidden fiddle yards, the actual profile of the rail will match up with each other and you can put the fish plates for Code 75 on both and likewise with the Code 100. Another thing that I like is that you don't actually need insulated fish plates on these. The insulated fish plates can look a bit ugly and chunky and it's always an annoyance when you're building a layout and either you find that you forgot to put one in and you've got to do some major surgery to fix any potential shorts or you find that actually late at night you're laying track and you've completely run out of them. This way you only need one type of fish plate and it makes things a lot easier. Unless you want to put in insulated sections really, this just makes track laying a lot simpler too.
Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video and found it informative too. And certainly there's some great information in there about wiring up the switching on your point frogs, even if you're not using bullhead points. So hopefully that's something that will be of help to modelers out there. I'd also love to hear from you if uh, you're already using these bullhead points. What are your experiences of them? Do you like them? Is there anything maybe that you think that I have missed? Please do leave a comment down below. It's a great resource for other modelers to read what uh, uh, other people in the community have found of a product. So really do look forward to reading all of your comments. And don't forget that we've got a link in the description box that's really, really important if you've thoroughly enjoyed the video content that we've been producing over the years here on this channel and uh, want to recognize that in some way, then do please head on over to the Hornby Magazine Awards where Model Rail YouTuber of the Year is the all new category. And I've been very, very honored to be nominated for this prestigious award. And I would be eternally grateful if you enjoy the content we put out here, that you would lend me your vote and help me not to come last. I've got flashbacks of school sports, but no, never mind. But until next time, you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling, take care. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections, no collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange, any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshaw Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Horton. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.